So in this video, I wanted to talk about a pen a lot of us are probably have used in the past but are not really familiar with. It's called the Papermate Profile. It's an old school ballpoint. It was made starting in 1964. I'm not sure when it went out of production, but it's definitely an old school jotter type ballpoint pen from Papermate. And I'm sure you've seen one at some point. It's sometimes known as the double heart or twin heart pen because of the distinctive two hearts on the clip, but that's Papermate's logo, so you see that all over. But if you think of the Papermate pen, like the distinctive old school Papermate, it is this one. So I'm not sure what year this one is, but this is a pretty standard one to my eye. Uh, when this came out in 1964, it was sold in three different widths. One was called the Husky, one was called the Regular, and one was called the Slim. Those are really what it was called, as per an ad from that era. I'm pretty sure this is a regular, not a Husky or a Slim, but I don't have a lot of these, so it's hard to tell. So let's look at the pen briefly. It is definitely narrower, narrower than you would expect. You can see it next to even just like a Bic from that era. This is actually an older design, the Bic Crystal, and that is a good deal wider than this. All metal, metal upper, metal clip, metal button, uh, has a nice heft to it. It's clearly back from when they did not skimp on materials. Plastic front piece, but you can tell it's that kind of hard, old school plastic. It has a lot of scratches in it. It's almost like a, a resin, and older plastics definitely wear differently than the newer plastics. And then you can see there is a tip protector at the front. The hole in that tip protector is quite small, and that is indicative of how small the refill, or the writing tip of the refill is. Uh, and that'll be important if you ever need a new refill for one of these. So that's it, the Papermate Profile. It's uh, a cool pen, but it never has gotten to be the collectability, gotten to the, be the collector's item that the jotter has been, which is pretty interesting since a lot of the features of the two pens is fairly similar. like. You know, a lot of metal, cool design, American company, stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, these do have some interesting features, which we'll get into. There's only a little bit of writing on it. You can see right here, it says Papermate. It was made in Mexico, even though the Papermate company was based in the U.S. Uh, some of the, obviously, manufacturing was outsourced to different countries. And then it says Papermate again. And now they just open it up. So definitely full plastic lower with the writing tip there. Really not too much to see here. It's pretty lightweight. It's got like the jotter where despite the how nicely made the upper was, the lower is just kind of a, you know, a pretty lightweight piece of plastic. Has a very big spring. This is back when, you know, materials were not as expensive and parts were made to last much longer than they are today. You can see it's a, a large spring and the gauge is a lot heavier than used today. It's just like a nice spring. A lot extra material here, those extra coils towards the end. There's just more than there needs to be. I don't know, you could just tell these older pens, they used higher quality springs and I don't know how much of an impact it actually has on the pricing, but I'm sure it's noticeable as you're producing millions of these. The refill itself is a really interesting part of the pen. Uh, it says Papermate, and then it's worn out here. I think it might be the Long Glide, but it's maybe the Luck Glide. I'm gonna have to do some research on that and figure out what it is. The type of refill is really no longer used. You could still buy them. If you look up the Schneider Express 225, you will be able to find this refill. It's called an ISO G1. And it has this sort of weird shape with a plastic end piece here, a skinny main section, and then a taper, and then a very narrow front end. And then what really sets it apart is the extremely narrow writing tip here. There's other refills that look like this, like an A1, but they will have a different width to the writing tip, and some of them will have a little spring stop here, like a uh, almost like wings. With this one, the spring goes all the way to that tapered piece there, so there's no need to have wings. 
and the wing is just a like an area where the, the uh, metal was crimped and it sticks out a little bit. But yeah, if you need one of these, you're looking up a Schneider Express 225. And uh, these are just, they're fine ballpoint refills. They last reasonably long. They tend to use old school oil-based ballpoint ink, but the Schneiders are, are rather good. The upper piece has a nice heft to it, despite being quite skinny. Uh, you can see those two hearts are uh, pretty nicely done. Not quite as sharp as they could be, but pretty nice. There's definitely a little speck of enamel or something like that in there, which is another nice touch. That's not something they would have had done. And uh, it's kind of, again, one of those things where it's just a little bit nicer than it needed to be. Really plain clip, although it actually works quite well. Uh, no sharp edges, right? Even though it's stamped steel, uh, it is just pretty nice to feel, nice to touch. Uh, it doesn't hurt your hand or have any sharp edges, which is cool. And then metal button. Metal button has a spring in it, which is nice. So it doesn't only rely on this spring. And that means it doesn't feel loose. There's no shake because it's reinforced on both sides by a spring and kept nice and tight. This is definitely an older pen. So you could see there's a lot of wear here just from it being pushed and pushed many, many times, uh, which is, you know, just a nice little feature or like some patina, just knowing this thing has some years behind it. And again, I don't quite know how old this one is, but uh, it's definitely, you know, I don't know, 20 plus years old would be my guess. So that's it, the Papermate Profile, AKA the Double Heart. Uh, definitely a little bit hard to focus on such a narrow pen. And it has an old school ballpoint refill. I'm not sure if this is the original refill or what. To my eyes, it kind of looks like the original, but there's a good chance it was replaced at some point. And these old school ballpoint refills, uh, what's crazy is that a lot of them still write. They have a lot of resistance, but they will write on anything. This is like probably what you would have written with, with a pen like this on a newspaper. Not what I write on, but I feel like old school ballpoint, you might be filling in the crosswords. So no problems there. It's definitely a lighter ink, but it's hard to figure out exactly how much of that is the quality of the ink and how much of it is just that this is a very old refill and a very old pen. And then this is the pen you might find in like a garage to write on some sandpaper or something like that. This is the... Paper mate, and it's always two words. Paper mate, I always think it'd be one word, but it's paper mate and it's the profile. So it writes fairly well. I don't know what I was spelling there. Definitely not paper mate. Getting a little distracted by writing on sandpaper. It's not something I do very often. The refill is more or less shot but the fact that it has lasted so long is pretty cool. So I think that is a nice thing to see. And uh, I think the last thing I want to talk about is if these are really worth collecting in a world where you can go out and get a jotter or something like that just as easily. Uh, I haven't seen these become as interesting as some of the jotters. There's less special editions or fewer special editions, uh, fewer special features, fewer variants. And I think that's one of the reasons why people haven't gone, gone ahead and picked up as many of these profiles. You could buy them in kind of new old stock condition in like the 20 to $40 price range, which is uh, pretty high, but I guess no matter what it is, there will be someone collecting it. So I wouldn't say this is that interesting to me and it's a pen that I would get into. Uh, I've been hunting down some of the nicer ones and I haven't found anything that's like a must have for me. So I've been pretty happy with a couple old ones like this one that I just happened to find in different pen lots and things like that. And then lastly, I wanted to do a quick size comparison. It's right about the size of the Bic Crystal. It's from a length standpoint, obviously the crystal is capped. The uh, profile is retractable. So right about the same length, the Bic has a bit more width to it. Uh, even if you factor in that this is round and this is hexagonal, the, bif, the BIC is a bit wider. So 
that is the Papermate profile. Interesting pen, and I'm glad that I have some of them kicking around, but not really something I'd recommend you going out and buy, if only because they have less variation than the Jotter and fewer interesting features, and then also you're restricted to that refill type that just has not aged nearly as well as the uh, Parker style G2 refill in the Jotter. So that's it. Thanks for watching.